Hi everyone. How are you doing? Okay. Uh, so let's get started. Today we are going to see more questions on all type of cases, right? So specifically, I have taken almost uh, all the good PYQs here. So uh, let's just uh, let's just start with the PYQs and a few questions, okay? Which I have taken from a standard university. So if I uh, if I talk about the gate PYQs, then I have divided gate PYQs uh, on cash, okay? Obviously on cash on cache memory in certain <laughs> types, right? So uh, one type of question is basically related, related with the tag bit, index bit and offset and, and so on, right? So uh, all of all of these PYQs, okay? All of these PYQs uh, we have already done. All of these PYQs we have already done. Now, this is going to be focus of our today, okay? So today we are going to do this. So today, I mean, uh, we have already covered the basics, but today we are going to solve few questions on the, and uh, with respect to PYQ, we will solve all the questions on the, uh, on the loops and array and with related to cache. Okay. I will talk about it. And then I have noticed that, uh, I mean, in the PYQs also, they have asked uh, these type of questions, which are related to uh, effective time to access, right? So we will solve them uh, tomorrow. And then one, two questions are, are of some different type. We will see them also. Okay. So, but today we are going to see this because this is a very, very important topic. Okay. Let's get started. Now, uh, let's see this example, which is locality example when I'm told, uh, I'm saying, okay. Suppose that I write a for loop here. Okay. Just focus on this for loop, which is having, uh, this is a nested for loop, right? Which is basically, basically accessing this particular array. Now, how many elements do you have in this array? So assume that you have M, M into N elements, right? In this array, assume that you have M into N elements in this array. So you are going to access all of them. How many times each element one time, right? So you are going to access all of the elements one by one. So which is the first element you will get access? What is the first element that you will access? As per the loop zero, zero, and then zero, one and, and so on, right? Okay. Now you just tell me, you just tell me that in the memory, how do they look like in the memory? See in the memory, in C programming, we store in the row major order, which means zero, zero, then zero, one, then zero, two, then zero, three in the memory. It will just look like a one dimensional array, isn't it? If you have seen C programming lectures, you might know this. Otherwise don't worry about it. So basically memory is just one dimensional array, right? You can say memory just one dimensional array of bytes. So basically, this is uh, this is how it will look like in memory. So what is what is the next thing that that you have in the memory? The next things that you have in the memory is basically these uh, these elements, right? So which means which means particularly you can say you have a one zero a one one a one two like this in the memory, right? What are the what are the next things you have in the memory? You have these things. So this is how they look in the memory. Is this okay to everyone? Look of memory. Okay. Now you tell me, okay, just forget about this for loop for now. You tell me if I want to access these elements, suppose if I access this element first and then I access some, something random, then I access something random. Then is this a good idea or I should be accessing everything in sequential order? I mean, uh, which one, if I add, if I need to add, let's suppose all of these, all of these numbers. Okay. Should I be accessing this first? And then this, then maybe this, then this, or should I be accessing, I mean, adding like this, which one is good? Adding sequentially is good. Why? Let me just tell you why can anyone tell me why that is good? Because, because this is, this is how your memory look like, but let's suppose this is how your cache look like, right? This is your cache, right? This is basically one block of memory. Suppose in one block, you are having four elements. This is one block of memory. You can, you can say that this is second block. This is third block, right? Now, now let's suppose this cache is just a very small cache. It is maybe having uh, okay. So here let's just assume uh, maybe uh, not, not four elements. Let's just assume maybe two elements. Okay. Two elements in one block. I mean, block size is maybe uh, if element is four bytes, then block size, maybe eight byte only. Okay. Suppose these are the blocks. Okay. And then let's suppose that your cache lines are just uh, four lines you have, or maybe two lines you have. Okay. Which means in cache, cache is very, very small, just for, uh, just to uh, make sure that you understand the example. So let me say that cache is very small and it is having just two lines. 
okay which means just two lines of cache so now tell me whenever you are accessing this element what will happen will this element only be going to the cache or the whole block will be going to the cache see this is a miss right this is a miss because cache is initially empty now tell me only this element will be moved to the cache or, or the whole block will move to the cache whole block will move to the cache right so so once you access this particular element then can you tell me after this access how does the cache look like cache will look like this a00 a01 isn't it now suppose suppose after you access this you immediately access this can't you find that in the cache you can find right you can find that in the cache so basically basically intuitively you can say that if you're accessing this next element immediately after then it is better because that's already in the cache but suppose suppose you are not accessing this you access this that's good so how many miss you have you you got miss miss here right because initially cache was empty so that's why you got miss here now suppose suppose that uh this is mapping to uh this is mapping to the line number zero then can you tell me the line number that it will map to line number one then line number zero then line number one then line number zero then line number one and so on right okay, okay. now suppose I, I i access something randomly okay it doesn't matter maybe i access this now now how 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 does the cache look like after this access it will look like this a12 and a13 isn't it isn't it because it is mapping to one let me know if that is fine to everyone so how many miss you had till now two miss because because this was the axis this was missed this was missed in terms of percentage can anyone tell me how many miss we have till now in terms of percentage you can say 100 percent why because two two axes i did out of this all of them were missed right okay not an issue uh i'm just saying uh let me just let me just uh, convey some intuitive idea then we will see it very formally okay now suppose now suppose instead of accessing this okay see if you access this now will there be hit or miss tell me it will be hit right but suppose instead of accessing this you are accessing anything random maybe maybe this one then then it will get replaced and you are going to have a22 a23 isn't it so it is also miss that's fine but okay now suppose now you access this is this beneficial to access this now since it is got already replaced then if we access this then the how, how does the cache look like it will be again having a12 and a13 right a12 and a13 so basically basically if you just check here that we we if we access randomly then is it might be the case that uh, that we are not taking advantage of locality which is called a special locality right most probably right if we are accessing randomly is this okay to everyone see what i'm trying to say that if you access the access this and immediately after you access this then then it will be hit but let's suppose if you access this then you access this and then you access uh, uh, let's suppose if you access this then you access this then you access this will it be hit or miss on this it will be it will be miss right because it is also mapping to the it is also mapping to the line number zero so that's why that's why the line number zero will replace with this block and it will be missed this particular will be missed again so it seems like that if we if we access in the sequential manner and it's, it's, it's a good idea right it's a good idea so so if i give you two choices whether uh given all of these elements whether to randomly randomly access or to access you know in a, in a more meaningful way then which will which will you way you to you, you will take you will say that okay it's better to uh, access sequentially right okay this is something that i wanted to convey that it, it is it is obviously better to access something in uh, in a sequence because that's how you can take advantage of a special locality right okay don't worry we will see numericals but for now i'm just uh, trying to convey some idea okay don't worry so now let's suppose now let's suppose that uh this particular loop okay that i have written ij is something is something like this j and i is something like this suppose this is j this is i am i adding all the elements now also or i'm leaving out something i think now also we are adding all the elements right now also i'm adding all the elements see this loop which was having i and j and this loop which is having j and i let me just call it locality example two okay so there are two loops i want to compare one is that i have i have i and j 
another one is that i have j first and i i next will this will this uh, be faster or will this be slower or it will be same can anyone guess it let's just check let's just check see earlier what we were doing you are accessing which element first a0 0, 0 right i0 zero, j0 zero. since i is still 0 j is 1 so once you access a0 then you are accessing a0 1 then you are accessing i is still 0 j is 2 let's suppose then you are accessing a0 2 then you are accessing a0 3 so earlier you are accessing in sequence isn't it isn't it now if you if you have this j and i can you tell me how you are doing now let's suppose again cache is just having two lines now you are saying that okay let's just first access okay so here uh yeah so uh what we are doing we are saying that uh, first we are accessing which element a j is fixed which means this zero is fixed then you are saying a zero zero a one zero a two zero a three zero right something like this isn't it let me know okay so so uh maybe let's suppose till two zero i have so what you are saying that you are accessing this first then you are accessing one zero and then you are accessing maybe uh two zero where is two zero this is two zero right so you are accessing first you are accessing this element then you are accessing this element then you are accessing this element tell me tell me uh will this be beneficial see earlier earlier you were accessing this then you were accessing this but now you are accessing this and the moment you access this you think it's a good idea it will be miss again right it will miss, miss again and then you are accessing this so it will be miss again then you are accessing you will see it is one then you are accessing this so don't you think that uh, that it will be miss on every element right on every element it will be missed so it is a hundred percent miss rate why it is miss every on every, every element like uh this don't worry about this percentage and all first uh, try to understand uh intuitively see what is happening if you are accessing this then line number zero will be containing zero 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 one then line number zero will get replaced with one zero right this is a miss this is a miss then again again since you are accessing this first time it will be miss again now you are going to access this right now you are accessing this tell me has this block has been replaced or not in line zero it is already replaced right since it is already replaced you will get miss again on here also then you are accessing which element then you are saying that okay if this is one this is one then zero one then one one right then you are accessing this tell me tell me will this be hit or miss If you access this, it will be miss again. Why? Can can anyone tell me at this point in time when you are accessing this? At this point in time, line zero contains what? This is line zero. This is line one. Line zero contains which block? Let's suppose this is block number one, block number zero, block number one, block number two, block number three, block number four, block number five. Line zero contains which which block? The moment you access this, block number zero, right? Because last you have accessed this, right? Last you have accessed this basically. So line zero will be containing this particular, this particular block, right? Now, if you access this, now, if you access this, won't you be again getting miss? Yes. Right now, now let's suppose you access this one is fixed zero one two. Okay. Two one. Now you access this. Won't you get, won't you be getting miss again? So it seems like this is not a good way. I mean, if you write J and I, it seems like it is not, not a good way. And if you write I and J, then you are accessing sequentially. I don't want to compare with the data in, in the sense that uh, how much will be hit rate, miss, miss rate. We will do it uh, very soon uh, in the today's lecture only. But today, uh, sorry, but, but, but for now, have you understood that what I'm trying to say? That this particular loop IJ is basically faster. Why? Because we are we are getting good good hit here, right? If you if you get miss on this, then you are going to get hit on this. Then again, you will get miss on this, but at least hit on this, right? So it seems like on half of the element we are getting hit, half of the element we are getting miss. I will I will calculate the exact exact numbers uh, later on. But but here here if you are hitting uh, missing on this, then next you are getting hit, right? But here, here in this example, this is miss. Then again, this is miss. This is miss. So it's a very cultured, right? Here and there, if you if you go on, it's not a good idea. Understood that as a programmer, what is your responsibility? 
to write ij not ji right as a programmer at least you can understand that just by the way of writing you are you are making your program slow or you are making your program fast right understood okay okay so basically don't worry about the hit rate and miss rate i mean in the sense that don't worry about the exact numbers but i hope you understood that if we if we access sequentially then it's a if it's a definitely a good idea because we can take advantage of the cache but if we are accessing let's suppose something here and there it's not a good idea right so today we are going to solve many questions on such type and there there has been five to six questions i think that that gate has asked okay we will we will solve all of them and some university questions so it's going to be very interesting class right so let's just get started with our very first question which i have taken from some university let's just see what they are saying so they are asking the miss rate okay miss rate is what number of miss upon total total access okay number of miss upon total access for a cache of size so cache size is given to us which is 512 bytes right that is a direct mapped cache okay and has 16 byte block size so block size is also given to us it is 16 bytes or 2 power 4 okay 2 power 4 bytes this is cache size is how much 2 power 9 bytes right okay so how many lines we have we can say 2 power 5 lines is this fine to everyone okay great now what they are saying uh, okay so, I just, so in this particular code let's just see that how many miss we are going to get see what is the size of the array 128 right on size of a arrays you can say array size is 128 elements or in other words you can say 2 power 7 into 2 power 2 bytes which is uh, which is basically 2 power 9 bytes is this okay to everyone so your array is a big array. Can this array be in the in, in just one block? Tell me. Can this array be in just one block? Obviously, no, right? It is spanning across the blocks, right? How many blocks it will take? What do you think? This array will be taking how many blocks? Can anyone tell me? Block size is 2 power 4 bytes. This is 2 power 9 bytes. So how many blocks it will be taking? 32 blocks, right? or 2 power 5 blocks you can say anyway so this block size is in the bytes i'm writing okay uh, maybe i can also write in, in terms of elements so how many elements can come in a block what do you think you need to divide by 4 right 2 power 2 so i think 2 power 2 elements can come in a block And array is having 2 power 7 elements. Okay, not an issue. So basically, let me just draw the array here. It will be, it will be something like this, right? It will be x0, then x1, till x. So let me write few elements here. x2, x3, till x, how much? One twenty seven because zero to one twenty seven. Okay, now each block is containing four elements, right? So this will be one block. This will be one block. Block zero, right? This will be block zero. Okay, that's great. So each block is containing four elements. Now, how many blocks it will be? So as you can see that there are one twenty eight elements. So 128 elements, each block is having four elements. How many blocks array will take? I think we have found out, right? Okay, array size in terms of byte we have. Okay, can you can you tell me how many blocks it will take? 2 power 7 upon 2 power 2. I think it will take 32 blocks, right? I think we 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 found it out just now. Okay, so it will be taking 32 blocks. Now that's why since this array is going to take 32 blocks, so let me just uh, ask you that what is this block number? 32 or 31 31 right great okay now how many blocks you have in the in the cache you have 2 power 5 okay so which means what i think uh this 
this whole array will be uh, will be going to the cache right i mean this cache can have the whole array is this so cache size is 2 power 9 bytes and array size is also 2 power 9 bytes okay cache can hold whole array that's that's great okay not an issue so uh so basically this is a block 0 and this is block 31 is this fine to everyone that i have just written the array and i i told you that this much is block 0 this much is block 1 and so on and so forth and basically this much is block 31 okay there will be one more element which i am not writing but anyway that's fine right this this much is block 31 now can you tell me just just using the mod operation can you tell me that that this block will be going to which line since there are 32 lines so you need to tell me this will be going to line number 0 then again line number 1 this block will be going to line number 31 right so i think the block number and line number are same here doesn't matter now now tell me what this loop is doing okay so first i have done what i have seen how does array look like in memory and what is my block boundary at least right so that i can get to know that okay whenever i'm accessing the element then how it is doing so what is my block boundary and so on that that's i have, I have understood okay now what which element this array is accessing now you come to the code okay so this was my first step where i have just seen that okay how how the array look in the memory now tell me which element it is accessing it is accessing x0 first isn't it so since it is accessing x0 first it will be hit or miss it will be miss right obviously it will be miss here now now interestingly all of this all of this block i mean the whole block will get copied so that's why on this particular element it will be hit or miss it will be hit it will be hit it will be hit right so out of four elements we have observed that it will be just miss on one right that's fine now you come to the next block want the want the same story repeat that on this particular element it will be miss because that element you are accessing first time although you are going to access i mean you you are going to store okay see you are going to store this into the line number zero this into the line number one and so on right till line number 31 total is 32 so this will sit in the line number zero this will sit in the line number one but isn't it the same story that this is miss here and three hit and one miss right so so this pattern is repeating so can you tell me so if the pattern is repeating you can you can just break on on, on wherever it is repeating or maybe you can take the whole thing doesn't matter so by the way can you tell me out of four elements how many it is miss miss on one so what is the miss rate one upon four right this 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 the answer miss rate is one upon four okay understood or not let me know see each each block each block element you are accessing very first time that's why it is a miss but again it will be hit hit hit, hit right understood now now if you have understood this then can you tell me if if okay uh now don't get confused i'm just asking you if you have let's suppose let's suppose if you have 16 lines here in the cache 16 lines what is the answer instead of 32 lines if you if you have half of the cache then what is the answer what is the miss rate if you have 16 lines only see this will be miss again right i mean if you have just 16 line then also it will be missed these, these all will be hit right then it is missed this all will be hit so you will be basically saying if if you have 16 lines then then you will be saying that see i now i have just 16 lines right so this will be mapping to can you tell me the line number the last block will be map mapping to 15 right line number 15 this will be mapping to line number 15 because mod 16 is 15 actually so 0 1 so basically this is block 0 0 i mean 0 will be mapping mapping here 1 1 2 here and till 15 till 15 there uh until block number 15 they will be mapping like this from block number 16 it will be again mapping to 0 right it will be again mapping to 0 but that's okay i mean uh as long as you are getting miss here and everything else is hit right this is miss everything else is hit so so it doesn't matter whether whether now when 16 is coming then it is getting replaced see earlier earlier it was not replaced right i mean 16 the block number 16 is mapping to whom 
since it is 32 that's why it is mapping to 16 only right so earlier it was not replaced earlier it was not replaced now i'm saying it is getting replaced but that's fine that's fine i mean this 16 is getting replaced anyway i have access all of these elements right i don't need to access them again so that's fine so here also even though you are decreasing the cache size your miss rate is not getting increased or decrease okay so here here if the cache size is is 16 lines then also miss rate is one by four let me know if you have understood this okay see uh first you should understand this that if you have 32 lines then what is happening this is going to uh, line number zero line number one and so on right so so here it will miss on this edited okay miss on this edited right now now let's just continue on this this example okay maybe maybe you can understand more now so let's just see that what is happening see let's just continue on this example only you need to tell me that how does the array look like sorry how does the cache look like after all of the access can you say the cache look like this 0, 1, 2, 3, I mean x of 0, x3, and then x4 to x7, and so on, right? And finally, uh, this will be the last line, which is having x127, I mean this whole thing, right? Isn't it the cache is completely full with the complete array? Tell me, isn't it cache completely full with the complete array? Let me know if you have understood this. See the cache size and the array size is same. So it so happened that we are the, the way we are accessing basically the cache will be completely full, right? And anyway, like um, however you access it, it, I don't think it will matter. The cache will be at the end of the day, it will be completely filled, right? If you are accessing all the elements. Let me know if that is fine. Or there is an issue. Okay, understood, right? Now, if I just ask you the question that can you tell me? miss rate miss rate on second iteration of the same loop what is the miss rate on the second iteration this is zero absolutely zero because there is no miss at all right there is no miss at all cache is full right no miss cache has complete array Okay, understood this. Take it. Thoda, uh, I know it might be overwhelming, but uh, but let me know if you have any doubt. See, let's just have the cache lines to be 32 lines only. Let's let's just forget about this this particular example. For now, we need to understand this one first, right? If cache is having 32 lines, then on the first on the first axis, what is happening, and on the next axis, what, what is happening? On both both of the iteration, you should understand. On the first iteration, it is missed, but everything is hit. So that's why one by four, right? But on the next iteration, everything is hit, right? This is miss rate on the first iteration. Zero is the miss rate on the second iteration. Okay. Cool. So so let's just do more examples. Probably you will get to understand more. Okay, let's see this particular question which I have taken from CMU University. But before I go to this question, I need to make sure that you understood this this example. On both of the iterations, have you have you understood this? On both of the iterations. Okay, okay. If you have understood this, then we can go to the next one, right? Or or don't worry, you will get to understand more with the next one, even if you have not understood the previous one. <coughs> Now let's just see this question which I have taken from very reputed university which is CMU University. Let's just see what they are saying. So they are saying in this problem you will perform cache analysis of the code uh, for the three code sequence. Okay, I have taken just one of the code but don't worry about it. Okay, for the codes, code given. Uh, assume a very small direct mapped 16 byte uh, data cache with two cache lines. So what is the cache size that is given to us? 16 bytes. Right? And two cache lines. So, uh, so basically, two lines are given to us. So, line size seems to be eight byte, right? We assume int rookite four bytes. 
Okay. So assume that int require four bytes. That's fine. So size of integer is generally four only drawing the cache help. Okay. So for a uh, given code sequence, we assume a cold cache. Cold cache means empty cache, initially empty. Okay. Empty, empty, initially empty. Cold cache actually means initially empty. Initially empty cache we assume, which is having two lines. Okay. By the way, uh, one line is basically seems to be how many bytes? Eight, eight bytes, right? So it, it may contain two integers, right? I mean, one block can contain two integers. Okay, that's fine. Now, what they're saying next, let's just see. Okay, this array, array name is X, that is cache aligned, okay? So what does this cache align mean? Can anyone guess? Cache align or block align? It basically generally means that let's suppose you have array x0, okay, x1, right? Let's suppose, let's suppose this is this is basically your main memory, which is one block, second block, third block, and so on. So whenever I say block align, cache align, it actually means that your first element is actually starting with the one of the block. I mean, it's not the case that x0 is here. Okay, it's not the case. Which means I will assume that my x0 is at the block boundary. Okay, it is aligned with the block. Is this fine? Because because if I assume x0 is here, then actually the analysis will be unnecessarily ugly. Okay. So let's just assume that x0 is here. That's I mean that's what it is given in the question. That x0 is starting with the block. That's called block aligned case align. Okay. Cool. Um okay, I will ask one question later on. Uh, okay, I will ask one question later on. Okay, so let's just continue for now. That is uh, okay. That is beginning of the first question. Another variable. Okay. Now they are asking number of cache messages here. Okay. Let's just uh, let's just go to the next page and let's just see that what is happening here. So they are saying you have a cache. You have a cache of how much size, which is having two lines, right? Which is having two lines. Each is having how many elements? Each is basically eight bytes, so it can have two two elements basically. Okay, it can have two elements. Okay, each 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 can have two elements. Anyway, this is eight bytes. This is line number zero. This is line number one. Let's just write the array. How the array will look like? This is x zero. This is x one. This is x two. This is x three, and so on. Right? Six zero. What is the size of block? If you remember, the size of block was eight bytes, right? Because there's just 16 bytes and two, two blocks on, only. So it is <clears throat> eight bytes. So which means, which means the block will be containing two elements only, right? So the, these are the blocks. So if these are the eight elements and block is containing two elements, then this is block number zero. Then how many total blocks are here, by the way? If there are eight elements and each block is containing two elements, then how many total blocks will, uh, will be there? I think four blocks, right? Four blocks. So this is block number zero. This is block number one. This is block number three. So this is my first step, right? This is always my first step that I see that how does array look in memory? Okay. This is how array look in the memory. Now, what is the next step that we need to perform? Just look at the code. Okay. What is given? Now, let's just see that how they're accessing the elements. They are saying that you need to access all of the elements once and then again. Okay. So you are accessing twice, all of the elements twice, basically. So if you access this first, can you tell me in which block it will be mapping? I mean, in which block of the cache, in which cache block, it will be zero. This will be one. Then this will be zero one. And this will be, can anyone tell me this will be from block number zero one. What do you think? One, right? One. Okay. okay. Cool. So you know that uh, what is the line number, right? So if you access this, it will be hit or miss. Miss definitely. Then it is a hit. Then on this, it will be miss and then it is a hit, right? So miss, hit, miss, hit, which means out of two elements, one miss, miss, one hit. Okay. On, on the next one, what do you think? X4 and X5. Okay. Let me write it completely. I think there is just one more that I need to write. Okay. On the next one.
this is another block right so i think this pattern will repeat see this is a miss then this is a hit obviously because the cache uh, line line zero is containing this then line one is containing this then since line zero is containing this you will replace that right you will replace that and now line zero is containing this so miss hit now again miss it so on the first iteration it seems like on the first iteration half of them are missed half of them are, uh, are hit but they're not asking separately they're asking combinedly now if you do it again so by the way by the end of first iteration can anyone tell me what does the case have case has which uh, this line number zero is let's suppose this is zero one two three okay this is this, these are the block numbers this line number zero is having which block number can anyone tell me by the end of the first iteration yeah so by the end of the first iteration basically it contains the block number two and block number three right so which means which means end of first iteration it has x four x five and then it has x six and x seven right by the end of first iteration now you when you begin your second iteration does your first iteration help you i mean the previous iteration helped you or you are again going to get the uh, miss and then hit and then miss and then hit and then miss and then hit and miss and then hit right so it seems like the previous iteration is not helping but that's fine so i think the pattern is again repeating hit miss hit miss hit so basically out of two elements out of two elements you are getting one hit only or one miss whatever you want to say so this is your miss ratio right in both the iterations combinedly is this understood this is end of first iteration and then end of second iteration will look like same right end of second iteration uh, will also look like i mean the same thing okay let me know if you have understood should i repeat this am i okay uh maybe maybe uh, you just need to give me a feedback if i'm going too fast is it too fast or uh it's okay okay i think i'm going too fast right okay so maybe i can quickly repeat that what i'm trying to say see uh at the first iteration you are going to access this right so since it is not in the cache you will store the whole block not only one element right you will store the whole block so that's why you will store this particular block so this will be miss but again hit then you will store this so that's why it will miss here then hit then you will you will replace right then miss hit miss it so by the end of first iteration you will look like this i mean the uh, cache will look like this okay then if you access again this x0 so this cache is not containing x0 so that's why again miss and then hit so that's why one by two is the miss ratio okay so let's just see the answer which are which uh what is the answer that they have given yeah answer is 50 percent right in terms of percentage answer is 50 percent which i also taken the official answer from the cme university only understood okay now let's just modify okay let's just modify the same question little bit and let me just ask you something else suppose i just modify little okay the little thing is that that i want to modify is now the number of cache lines okay the number of cache lines are let's suppose more okay are basically more or maybe let's suppose if it is less suppose it is just one line then can you tell me what's going to happen let's just first solve for the one line So this is variation, right? Where number of cache lines. So on two to on two loop, what is happening? It is miss hit, miss hit, miss hit, miss hit. Then again, miss it. So how, how much it is going to change? What is the miss rate now? What is the miss rate now on, on these two loops combinedly? On the two iterations? again one by two right yes again one by two or 50 percent okay there is no change here okay this is same yeah great now uh let's have a little uh, other variation okay suppose i say number of 
cash lines now are four. Okay, let's suppose these are the four lines. Then on the first loop, it is one by two. On the second loop, what's going to happen? It is zero, right? So you can say, you can say if, if they ask you combinedly, okay, if they ask you combinedly out of how many, how many, uh, 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 like array element you are accessing, how many access you are doing, how many memory access you are doing, basically 16, right? 16 out of them, out of them, I think on uh, how much is the miss? How much is the miss? One, two, three, and four. So four is the miss. So that's why one by four is your measure issue here. Right. So it seems like increasing the cash line is good. Increasing the cash line is good. But even if you decrease it, it is not changing. For this example, it is not changing even the miss rate, right? Even if you decrease it, it's okay. Right. I mean, uh, if you keep it two, if you keep it one, both are giving the same answer. But if you increase it to four, it's it's reduced. Now the miss rate is actually reduced. Or in other way, you can say if you have one line, then making it two is not helping you. Right, making it two is actually not helping you. It is still fifty percent, but making it four is helping you, and it is actually reduced to twenty five percent. Okay, it is reduced to twenty five percent. Right. Okay. So, have you understood this example which I have taken from CMU? Now, now let's just see more examples because uh, we need to understand these kind of questions more, and then we will we will see the gate PYQ also. Right. Okay. So what they're saying that in this particular question, right? Uh, less. Okay. Thus, I think from the same university I've taken from CMU only. So they are, they are again asking you, okay. The question is on the next page. So maybe I can just copy this code, right? Okay. So they're asking you that what is the mesh ratio? If it is direct mapped 16 byte block size, the number of cache meshes, if it, if it is two way set associative, then what is the number of cache messages? Okay. So let's do one by one. Let's do for direct map that what is the answer we are getting here. So what is the answer that you will be getting for direct map? Let's just see. So they are saying the cache is direct map, right? So before, before even I look at the cache, maybe I can just look at the array that how does array look like in memory oh interestingly it is a two dimensional dimensional array which is good so i think a zero zero right what is the block size 16 byte block and four blocks we have in the cache that's okay so 16 byte block and one uh, element size is basically okay uh, in these examples i uh, i'm assuming that integer is of four bytes okay so so just a second yeah. So basically, uh, one block will be containing how many elements? If it is 16 byte block, then four elements, right? Four elements. Okay. So A00, A01. So I think till A03 only it will be containing. Okay. A01, A02. A03, A04, like that, right? A10, and so on. Okay. So our block will be containing only this much till 03, not, not till 04, till 03 it will be containing. Now we have four blocks, right? We have four blocks. One, two, three, and four. Okay. So first you access this, then are you going to get hit or miss? You are going to get miss, right? Initially, I mean, initially, initially this will be miss, right? So first you access this, then it will be miss. Okay. So it will be miss. And then for these three, it will be hit, right? Okay. Now, if you access this, it will be again, miss. And for next three, it will be hit, right? So I think. I think it's a fairly, uh, it's a, it's a, a fairly simple question. So on every four, you are getting one of them is right. 
that's fine but i think here the number of array, array elements is 25 so basically what will happen that uh till till i can say till 24 elements is okay uh because that's in the block now there will be a last block actually but it will be just containing just one of the array element right uh, whichever is the last one uh what is the last one here four four i think right okay and there is no array element here is this block boundary boundary okay to everyone See, each block will be containing four elements. So four, 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 four. So multiple of four, uh, where it will end? Uh, where will where will it end? At 24, right? Then 25th element, whatever is the index, let's not worry about it. But the 25th element will be left alone in one of the block, right? At the start of this. And then rest of this is not an array element, not an uh, not, not the array elements. Is this okay to everyone? That how does the array fit into the blocks, at least in the main memory? Okay. So till 24, you observe that, that, that maybe, maybe uh, how many misses you got till, till 24, how many misses you got and every four, you are getting one. So I think six miss you got, right. And every four, you are getting one, right. So one by four is the miss rate till 24, but six missed, missed till 24, but one more miss here, right. One more miss here. So total seven misses you are got. Is this fine to everyone? Let me know. <laughs> See, here, here, the array elements are given in such a way that there are there are 25 elements, right? Okay, 5 into 5. 25 elements we have from 0 to 4 is the index, but but that's okay. So if we have 25 elements, then what's going to happen? That the last element will will be alone. I mean, each block can contain only four. So four, four, four. So where it is ending the multiple of four near to 25 at 24, it is ending. So the last element, which is 25th element, whatever is the index, let's not worry about it. But, but the 25th element will be left alone in one of the block. And there is no other elements which are accompanying that particular element, right? So that's why six misses till, till these, this block, but here, here, there is one more miss, which is seven miss, right? Understood. Okay, so let's just see the answer. Maybe seven misses is the answer. Okay, let me know. Was it uh, was it too difficult to understand? Just because they have given the array boundary in such a way that it is the last. I mean, the uh, last block is not not containing the uh, all the elements are not array elements of the last block, right? Only only just one or two elements are there. So that's why this question is little twist, but the, but the fundamentals are same, which means you just need to see that how array is in the main memory and then how you're accessing it. Right. So you're accessing in the sequential way because this is I and J. So you're accessing in the sequential way. So I think that's fine. Right. Now let's just move to the next question here, which is, which is this one. Okay. I mean, if it is two way set associative, then how things are going to be changed. So let's just move to this one. Two way set associative means what? It means how many uh, they are saying do you have two sets? Okay, how many sets we have? Two sets. Two sets we have. Each set is containing how many lines? These are two sets. Each set is containing two lines, right? So this is one set. You can say set zero. This is set one. Okay. 8 byte uh, block size. So block size is 8 bytes, which means each block will be containing how many elements? Just two elements. So let's just look at that how array will look like in main memory. So basically, <clears throat> since each block is containing two elements, again, I think the last element or the last block will be just containing the 25th uh, element, whatever is the index, but yeah, it will be not containing two elements. It will be just containing one element, right? Other than the last block, I think everyone will be containing two elements. Is this fine to everyone? What I'm saying here? So this is how your array look like in the main, main, main memory, right? This is our first step. 
then then we see that how we are accessing okay 0101 now can you tell me the set number don't tell me the line number can you tell me the set number for this block the set number set number is zero right then this is one or will this be the same set tell me if they are sequentially uh, then is, is the same set or the can you tell me the set number here it will be one right it is always always in the modulus function right always repeating so it is zero then one and if if there are multiple sets then zero one two three like like that and so on okay so it is miss here and then you will put it then it is you will put this here okay then the next thing you will put it here okay and the next thing you will put it here so you can put one two three four four blocks right Okay, so basically, uh, basically, whenever you are accessing any element, right, whenever you are accessing any element, you are going to get miss and then you are going to get hit, right? Miss and hit. Will this pattern anyway at any time, can it change? See, whenever you are accessing any element first time, it will be miss and the next will definitely be hit, right? So, can you tell me till this point? It doesn't actually, I don't think it matter that how many sets we have or how many sets we don't have. Even if we have just one of the line, even there are four lines, right? Even if we have just one line, then, then it is miss and hit, right? Miss and hit. So it is always going to be miss and hit, right? Irrespective of what is the size of the cache. It is always going to be miss and hit. Okay. So till this point, if these are 24 elements till this point, can you tell me how many miss we have till this point? 12 miss and then one more miss which is this one right so total 13 misses understood if even if we have just one line just forget about two sets forget about four four lines even if we have just one line then also it is miss and hit miss and hit this pattern is not changing based on the cache size right whatever is the cache size since this is the very first time i'm accessing it is miss next it will be missed because it is a one block and one block will get transferred okay understood this question so i think 13 should be the answer right so i hope now you you are getting the intuition that how to solve this question so how to solve you first need to look at that okay how the arrow look in the main memory what is the block boundary a block is containing how much of the array elements then then okay just see that okay you are transferring and, and so on right very easy it's not a rocket science you just need to look at that okay how array is in the main memory and what is the block is containing and then okay you just keep on transferring the block okay it will get transferred it will get transferred and so on right understood should we move to the next question now Okay, these two questions are done, I think, right? Now, let's look at the same question. This is the same question and this is a part B. In part B, they are saying that now they are saying the iterations are, are two. Okay, if iterations are two and now they are saying if direct map is used and a two is set is to be used, then what are the misses here? Should we solve this or it will be too much? I think it will be easy once you understand the things, right? So we are just uh, trying to solve uh, difficult questions such that uh, when, whenever, you know, you need to face any, uh, any difficult question later on, you should be able to solve it, right? So let's just solve this also. This is also from the same CMU university. So let's just try to solve this part first. So they are saying it is direct mapped 64 byte block size and two sets. Okay. So uh, sometimes people call it set, but it is just lines. Okay. So it is also two lines basically. Basically set size is just one line. So you can understand it is indirect map. You can say it is line only. Okay. So this is direct mapped and they are saying two lines are only there 64 byte line. If it is 64 byte line, how many array elements it can contain? I think it can contain 16 elements, right? This time. So one of the line can contain 16 elements. So maybe you can say that, that first 16 elements, whatever is the index will be just one block, right? A002, whatever is the index, but yeah, first 16 elements is one block and 
I don't think we even have the 16 elements, but yeah, uh, remaining uh, whatever nine elements, I think, right? Remaining nine. So these are the nine elements. Will be in the another block. Is this fine to everyone that how the array look like? I'm not writing the indexes because it's not uh, too much useful. Okay. But the array orientation look like this, that there will be 16 elements in one block and then remaining nine elements in another block. Let me know if this, this particular uh, diagram is okay to everyone. Okay. Now we can try solving it. See, they are accessing this first. So one miss out of 16 here, because this will get uh, fit into just one of the line and one miss here. So how many misses we have? Two miss, right? Is this fine? Two miss in first iteration and in the next iteration, how many miss you have? In the next iteration, what do you think? Zero misses, right? Because cache will keep like will completely contain this array. So zero miss in the next iteration. So that's why I think two should be the final answer here. Okay, two misses. Understood? See what I'm saying that first you need to look at the array orientation that how it look in the main memory. Once you understand that, okay, this is how it look, it is going to look in the main memory. Then I think uh, later part is easy, right? So I'm not even writing the indexes. Okay. We will keep on reducing the complexity as per we understand the things more. Okay. Because, because see, even if I write the index, it is not helping me to solve the question. Right. So I'm just saying, okay, first 16 elements and then nine elements. That's all right. Cool. Okay. So it is coming out to be two misses. And now let's just solve, let's just solve the next question. Right. Okay. So now they are saying you have just one set, which is having two lines. Each line is containing 32 bytes, right? Which means how many elements? Eight elements, right? Eight elements. Okay. So this is just one set, set zero. Okay. Now eight elements you are going to contain, which means first eight elements. So how many elements you have? You have 25 elements, right? So it will look like this, right? Four, four blocks you are going to use. And then there will be one element, which is 25th element, which is going to be here. These are the eight elements block, right? Eight elements. This is some, some last element. Let's not worry about the indices, right? I'm going to access this. Then there will be miss here. There is miss here. And everything is set zero by the way, right? Everything is set zero. This is zero. This is zero. This is zero. This is zero. Okay. There's a miss here. And let's suppose we are using LRU. Okay. I mean, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it should be given, but, uh, but if this is not given, then we are going to use the LRU. Okay. Okay. So this is miss here, miss here. And then it will be, uh, the set will be containing these two. Then it is miss here again. Now you tell me which one you will be replacing. You will be replacing the first one, right? And then it will be miss here again. Then you will be replacing this one. So how many misses do you have in the first iteration? Four miss in the first iteration, right? Then since your cache is containing this, I don't think it is be bene it is going to be beneficial because now you are going to replace that with this. So again, one miss, then second miss, then third miss and four miss, right? Understood. Then again, four misses. So in the, in the second iteration also, again, you are going to have four misses. Okay. So total eight misses you are going to have understood. Let me know. Yeah. So, uh, so why I'm saying that, uh, that we are using LRU or let's just see, see, we are going to keep this, then we are going to keep this and then uh, whenever this is coming, then one has to be replaced, right? One of them, one of them has to be replaced because that's in the same set. Then which one will you, you will be replacing? 
okay even though you don't use uh, uh, lru or maybe something some other technique then also probably the answer is same right probably the answer most probably i don't know uh, it, it might also depend on the on the replacement technique but since i need to replace one of them that's why i'm saying that let's just assume that we are using lru understood so your question is that why lru need to be mentioned uh, only one set and the same thing is happening no but we need to replace one of them so that's why i'm saying let's just assume that we are we are using lru okay whichever is the least recently used we are just replacing that okay now let's see this question which i have taken from okay one and only mit so let's just see this question what they are trying to say this problem evaluates the cache performance for the different loop ordering. You, are, you need to consider the following two loops written in C, which calculate the sum of the entries in 128 by 64 matrix of 32 bit integers. Okay. So 128 into 64 is some array size and of 32 bit integer, which means, okay, integer size is basically four byte only. Okay. Some usual things are they, they have given. Okay, now they, they are saying there are two loops are given. Integer size is just four bytes only and two loops are given. Consider a direct map uh, cache memory with, uh, with two power 12 bytes, right? Two power 12 bytes. And 32 byte cache line. So two power five byte is cache line. So cache size is two power 12 bytes. Line size is so each line will be containing how many elements? Two power two, you need to divide, I think. Two power three elements, right? Okay, four, you need to divide. So which means if you have 128 into 64, let's just convert that also. Two power seven, two power six, two power 13. So you have two power 13 elements, right? Okay, so total you have two power 13 elements. So this is how your array will look like. Okay. So maybe I can also write the numbers. So let's suppose this is what is the name of the array? Capital A. Okay. Capital A zero zero. Capital A zero one. Each line is containing eight elements. Okay. So there will be, let's suppose this is one block. Suppose this is one block. And so on, right? So there will be, there will be uh, many blocks. And then I think there will be a one zero also. And then, then it will be eight elements, right? Eight element block, basically. And if you have, if you have, how many elements you have? 128 into 64. So 128 into 64 elements you have. And each block is containing eight elements. So how many blocks you have? Two power 10, right? So total two power 10 blocks. Is this okay to everyone? So this is how array will look like in the memory. Okay, total you have 2 power 10 blocks. I mean, in 2 power 10 blocks, your array will spin, right? you in 2 power 10 blocks. Now, they are saying that you have, how many lines you have? You have, uh, cache size is this, so number of lines is basically how much? 2 power 7 lines, right? Okay, so here, here, let, let me also draw the cache. Two power seven lines we have total. By the way, uh, these are the two power ten blocks. Do you think the complete array can reside in the in the cache? The complete array can reside. No, right? Okay. So so basically here this is our first step that we will see that okay how the array is looking like what is the uh, what is the bird boundary uh, what is the block boundary and so on so this is how array is going to look like okay now we have they are saying there are two loops we have 
and for both of the loops we need to analyze the number of misses right so maybe we can analyze one by one let's just see that in what order we are accessing in the first loop and in what order we are accessing in the second loop and then what is the number of misses in the both of the cases right okay so here we are accessing an ig order which means we are accessing sequentially so it will be hit or miss here tell me miss right so out of eight element how many miss you you will get only one miss here right so you will get one miss and there are two power 10 blocks so basically how many miss you will you you will get here can you tell me can anyone tell me how many miss you will get in the loop one for every block just one miss right and then it will it will reside in one of the one of the cache line doesn't matter i don't think even if the number of the lines are lesser or more it won't matter right generally generally it matters if you're if you're accessing it twice right if you're accessing twice then if it is more let's suppose the cache can contain the whole array then if you're if you're accessing twice if and the cache can contain the whole whole array then what is the miss rate in the next iteration generally it is zero right because if the cache is basically let's suppose fill with the whole array then it is zero but anyway if you're accessing just once then miss no one can avoid this miss right because uh, because this is the very first time you are accessing this so no one can leave leave out this miss this is also called as compulsory miss okay these kind of miss are also called as compulsory miss so this is compulsory miss because that's going to happen and then hit 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 it and similarly so for every block i think just one miss so 2 power 10 misses here right is this understood to everyone very easy question you just need to see that how does the array look in the main memory and how you are accessing right let us now see this particular loop that how this particular loop is getting executed okay so let me do one thing let me just copy this uh, on the next page and then we will see right so let me just copy this on the next page so this loop interestingly is saying that instead of ij so instead of i and j they are saying j and i so what does this mean that j is fixed which means this particular index is fixed this is zero and then it will be zero only then you will be accessing first uh like you will be accessing in this manner which means first a zero zero then uh then a one zero right so let me just tell you that how you are going to access see this is going to be the order in which you are going to access the elements this will be the first element is a zero zero then a one zero then a two zero then a three zero and so on so as you uh, as you know from the previous uh, diagram let me just copy this also okay see array is spanning over 2 power 10 blocks right so uh, let's just do one thing let's just write it here so as you can as you can see that array is spanning over 2 power 10 blocks right that's what we already know okay great now now here if array is spanning over 2 power 10 blocks, then uh, in the cache, how many blocks we have? In the cache, I think we have only 2 power 7 blocks, right? So let's just see. See, suppose this is your cache memory and you have 2 power 7 blocks, right? 0 to 2 power 7 minus 1 and total 2 power 7 blocks we have, right? Okay. So uh, let's just see the access pattern in which, uh, in which the array is getting accessed. So first you are going to access A00 and then you are going to access, then you are going to access A10, right? So A00 you are going to access and then you are going to access A10. Cool. So as a first step, what we should notice here. See, this is this is going to be in the block 0, right? Block number 0. I mean, the number of elements, whatever is the number of elements in one block. But yeah, uh, this is going to be in the block 0. So this A00 is going to map to the block 0. So, which means the block number, let me write the num block numbers. You are going to first access here the block number 0. And then you are going to access this A10. Can you tell me what is the block number of this? Let's just see. Let's just see what is the block number of this. See, this A00 is going to be A00, then A01 till, till what is the uh, J? Uh, this is basically 64. So, till A063 or something, right? A063 or something. So basically, you can say 
you can say this is going to be one block and then then there are there are multiple blocks and a063 will be the last element before you access this a10 i mean before uh, before a10 in the memory this is a063 my question to you is that let me just do one thing let me just write uh, the steps here see what i am doing here is that i want to just figure out so my question to you is that what is the block number of a10 so basically step 1 is basically you can say that uh, first block right first block number and then what is the second block number so first block number we we know it is the block 0 block number 0 and what is the second block number so what is the block number of this particular element that's what we are interested in right so one block as we know can contain eight elements and there are 64 elements so how many blocks you have till now so from from here to here before this you have 64 elements and divided by eight elements you have eight blocks right you have eight blocks from here to here starting from here to here you have eight blocks in this region right so what i'm saying here is that that see you have let me just go to the next page you have one block which is having eight elements right let me not write the indices. I'm not very, very, very interested in the indices. I'm just interested, let's suppose, in the block number. But yeah, there are eight elements. Maybe if you want, you can write uh, A07. I mean, the index if you want. But we are not very particular about the index, right? So there are eight, uh, eight elements in one block. Okay, eight elements. Now, my question was that before you see this particular this particular element which happens to be a10 how many blocks you have till this point how many blocks are they so as you know that there are 64 elements right 64 elements so how many blocks you have if one block is containing eight elements then you have basically eight blocks can you tell me the block numbers also if eight blocks are there then this must be from zero to seven blocks block number basically then what is the block number of this the block number of this particular element is basically block number 8 because block number 0 to 7 is uh, is before it and then block number 8. So if I ask you the access pattern, okay, the access pattern in terms of the block number, access pattern, pattern of block numbers, block numbers, then it is going to be block number 0 you are accessing because you are accessing this particular element then you are interested in block number 8 directly right you are not interested in block number 0 again you are not interested in this element you are not interested in this element neither you are interested in this element so once you access the block number 0 then you are at access uh, then you are accessing block number 8 and then it will be plus it plus it right then you are accessing block number 16 then you are accessing block number 32 sorry not 32 uh 24 then you are accessing block number 32 and then you are going to access these blocks uh side by side right so that's what you are going to do i mean uh these are the access pattern of the block numbers basically 0 8 16 24 32 and so on right these are the access patterns i hope you understood okay so if this is the access pattern, which means now, now let's not worry about anything else, right? We, we got our access pattern and then, uh, let's just write the access pattern directly. So this is our access pattern basically, right? Of the blocks. So block number zero, you access, then eight, you access, then 16, you access and so on. Okay. Now, if cache is having, if cache is having two power seven blocks, then can you tell me the line numbers also? of each of this block number so access pattern of block numbers you can say block numbers now can you tell me the line numbers of each of this block number the line numbers right to which they map to see it is going to map to obviously zero because you are going to take mod 128 so this is 2 power 7 blocks right or 2 power 7 lines so you can say this is 8 then this is 16 then since you are going to access 08 uh, 08 16 then uh, what's your uh, what is the next one then it will be i think 24 then 32 so basically you can say in the first go okay in the first go you are only accessing multiple of 8 which is fine uh, this is 32 then uh, then 40 then 48 then 56 then uh, 64 and so on right you are going to access in this way okay so before I ask you, even before I ask you that what is the line number, 
can you tell me that what kind of uh, pattern it is it is plus 8 right it is plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 i mean this is the access pattern of the block numbers okay suppose randomly randomly if someone ask you that are you going to are you going to access are you going to access this let's suppose 1 120 okay are you going to access this block number 120 then what you will say if it is divisible by 8 if it is divisible by 8 then you are going to access otherwise you are not going to access right so if it is divisible by 8 then you will access because you are accessing in the first iteration okay in the first iteration you are saying okay block number 0 block number 8 block number 16 and so on right so in the first iteration you are accessing 0 8 16 so is this divisible by 8 let's just check it right so uh, i think it is divisible by 8 right it is divisible by 8 so you will access it somewhere maybe 120 is somewhere right Someone asks you, are you going to access this 130, let's suppose uh, 136 somewhere, okay? Then maybe you will check, is this divisible by 8? Is this block number divisible by 8? Let's just check, right? So it will be, it will be divisible by 8, right? It is since it is also divisible by 8, that's why you will say that yes, you are somewhere, somewhere you will access 136. If someone asks you, are you going to, are you going to access this block number in this particular first iteration? Then you will say, let me check, is this divisible by 8? So since this, this is not digital 8, this is not digital 8. So that's why you will say this 132 won't come, right? Maybe, maybe 120 will come. Then after that, 128 will come. Then after that, uh, this 136 directly will come. So 132 won't come in this particular uh, iteration, right? So you are not going to access this, not going to access this. Right? So you are going to access only whichever is multiple of 8. Right, you are going to access whichever is multiple of you. I hope that is fine to everyone. Now, now, if I ask you that what is the line number of this particular block? Zero. Then what is the line number of eight? Uh, eight, sixteen. Then till I think you are going to access one twenty also. So one twenty. So for one twenty eight, what is the line number? Can you tell me? See, this is interesting. Now, if I ask you what is the line number for block number 120, which you will access, right? You are going to access 120, 128, 136 and so on, right? 128, you are going to access 136, you are going to access and so on, right? Since there are, there are this array is containing actually 2 power 10 blocks, right? The whole array is containing 2 power 10 blocks. So I think um, you are going to access, uh, access many blocks. I mean, this is 1024 till 1024 block number, whatever is a multiple of eight, you are going to access, right? till 1024 block number whatever is the multiple of it now now first you will access block number 0 which means this this particular line will be containing block 0 then then will the line 1 contain anything no because line 1 is i mean there is no block which is mapping to line 1 then directly you will go to the you will go to the block number okay i am talking about the numbering you will go to the block number or line number 8 that will that will get mapped then then uh, so basically if you if you talk about the cache if you talk about the cache also, then you can say that if this is the access pattern, then in the cache, how you are going to fill the numbers? Let me just tell you. See, in the cache, the numbers will be something like this. Okay. The numbers will be something like this. So you will say you are first going to have in the cache, you are first going to have um, this line number zero. Line number zero will be filled, right? Because line number zero is here. Line number eight will be filled. So line number zero will be filled. Okay, by block number 0 by some quantity. Then line number 8 will be filled. Then line number 16 will be filled. And so on, right? And so on. So, <clears throat> so you are going to access these, these elements in that order. So, obviously, it will be missed. I mean, um, at, at, at a first go, it is definitely missed, right? It is definitely missed. So, for, for the first iteration, it is definitely missed. Now, now, Interestingly, this 128 is again mapping to uh, block number or line number 0. This 128 is again mapping to the line number 0. It means what? It means that in the first iteration itself, this, this was containing block 0, then, then this will contain block number 128 again. Right? And then probably 128 plus 128, which is 256, then, then and so on. So basically, this particular line will get replaced multiple times by, uh, by different, different block numbers. By block number 0, by block number 128, by block number 256. And I am only talking about the first iteration, right? First iteration. See, in the first iteration, you are going to access A00. And then somewhere, somewhere A01. Then somewhere, sorry. A10, 
a10 then somewhere a20 and so on so as a first step what i did i was just just interested that what is the gap between two axes so i found out the gap is eight blocks which means if this is the block number 0 then the next is block number 8 so once I found out the gap, this is my most crucial step. Okay. Once I found out the gap, I made the access pattern itself. I got to know the access pattern just by finding out the gap. Okay. Gap, which means that, okay, I'm going to access this block. Then I'm going to access this block. Then certainly I'm going to access uh, block number 16, then block number 24 and so on. So in the first iteration itself, I'm going to access till, till. So the last element will be, I think this I is wearing i is wearing till 128 right i mean 127 will be there okay so whatever is the block number let's not worry about it I, i'm not very interested in the block number of every uh, every every element okay whatever is the block number let's not even worry about it okay because it's not been asked so what is being asked we are just focusing on that and for that we don't need the block number of everything we are just seeing that okay the gap is eight blocks which means in every eight 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 you are going to access this is the first observation. The second observation is that this particular zero will get replaced and, and, and by symmetricity, I mean, everything will get replaced. Right? This eight will get re replaced with eight plus one twenty eight block number and so on. Right. So everything will get replaced. It's not like that. So what I'm saying that in the first iteration, anyway, it is missed by, by any, uh, everyone in the second iteration, you are going to access a zero one. At that time, my question is that at that time, do this line contain, contain the block number zero or not? Do this line contain block number zero? So what is your answer? No, because it has been replaced. See, there is some block number, which we are going to access again, which is block number 128. And what is the element index? Maybe we can find out, but we are not very, very interested. If you want, we can find out. See, uh, see that this a 0 0 and then we have a a 1 0 right so we are first going to access this then we are going to access this how many elements are there these till till now these are 64 elements right 64 elements which means eight block so so i can say for this the block number was zero for this, the block number was eight, right? Okay. So, which means if I if I want to find out that for what what no, index the block number will be, let's suppose one twenty eight, then probably probably if you notice, then I I I can divide by eight, right? If I divide by eight, I get this index, or maybe vice versa. If you multiply by eight, if you let's suppose if someone asks you, given given this uh, this index, okay, a one zero, what is the block number? This is eight. A zero zero, what is the block number? This is zero. So so basically, uh, if someone asks you, what is the block number for, let's suppose a two zero, then you will say this is 16, right? Because 16 is a block number here. Similarly, if someone asks you, what is the block number if, uh, of a 20 zero, then you multiply by eight, it will be 160, but 160 is not the total blocks in the cache itself. Uh, I mean, uh, okay. For, for the block number, it is 160, but it will map to, it will map to 160 mod. 128 right but a yeah, block number will be 160 that that's correct so basically you can multiply by 8 with this index right or vice versa if someone give you the block number then what is the first index that it is storing divided by 8 so it is 2 power 7 divided by 2 power 3 it is 2 power 5 so probably you can say uh sorry 2 power 4 right so probably you can say a 16 0 a 16 0 is uh the index by which if we access this index the moment we access this index, it means we are going to replace uh, with uh, this particular block. So basically, this particular block is having block number 0 or this particular line is having block number 0, then block number 128. So when I say block number 0, it is it is because of A00. When I say block number 128, it is because of A160. Okay. When I say uh, this is 256, it is because of divide by, if you divide by 8, it is 2 power 8, 2 power 3. Uh, so A320, right? So when you access A320, you are going to replace this particular uh, line. But that's okay. That's okay. Don't make things very complicated. What I am saying is that, what I am saying is that the moment you access this again in the second iteration, this is already replaced, right? So that is my only concern. So here we are not making use of uh, this locality. 
because the moment i access this this next element again this is already replaced so there is no use of uh, uh, of this uh, you know particular uh, uh, access pattern i hope you are getting see just to summarize what i'm saying that there there is miss on every point because because this was the compulsory miss because no, definitely it is getting uh, access first time this block is getting access first time so it is a compulsory miss but unfortunately the moment i access this next element of the same block this block is getting replaced right because my access pattern is 08 and something like that and then by by the moment i access this block number 128 i will i will basically replace this particular line so just to sum up what I'm saying, uh, let me go to the next page. So what I'm trying to say here is that, see, this is the loop which is given to us, right? This is the loop which is given to us. And now, uh, what is the very first step that you did? The step one, as we, as we always do, that how does array look in the main memory, right? So array looks like this in the main memory. A00, A00 uh, is the first element and then A01 is the next element and so on, right? Now we got to know that, okay, each block is containing eight elements. That's fine. So these are the eight elements that each block is containing, right? So each block is containing eight elements. Now there is some block, which is, which is obviously having eight elements and then which is having, let's suppose a one zero, right? And so on. So our first step is that how, how does array look like in main memory and how does cache look like? So cache is having. 128 blocks or 128 lines so 2 power 7 lines this cache is having now we got to know that okay we are accessing this element and then we are accessing this element which means what is the block number we are accessing okay so we are first accessing the block number 0 then we are accessing this block number 8 okay then then since we are accessing with the with the block numbers then we will be accessing with the block number 16 then then everything which is multiple of 8 right everything which is multiple of 8 so, which means what that, that now we need to check as a next step that this is basically, these are the total two power 10 blocks that this array has, right? Two power 10 blocks. Now we just need to check whether, whether the moment we access this again, that you already have this particular block in the main memory or it has been replaced. That's the simple thing that we need to check. So can you check this? Yes. See, something is, if, if this is mapping to block number zero, then something else will map to block number zero. And what is that block number? Block number 128 will map to the uh, to the uh, block uh, block zero of the cache. And are we accessing this 128? This is the next question. Then yes, yes, we are accessing because we are accessing in the first iteration everything that is multiple of 128, right? So that's why we are going to access this 128 also. So which means this will get replaced. Uh, first, uh, first it will be having zero, then 128, then 256, and then uh, this is... Uh, 256 then you can say 256 plus 128 right 256 plus 128 which is 384 and this will get replaced with 384 and so on so is this digital 8 yes it has to be digital 8 right? because everything which which we are accessing in the first iteration is digital 8 right so yes it will also digital 8 so anyway so basically it will it will get replaced and and that's how we are getting our uh, answer that okay it is going to get replaced then the moment you access this next which means the moment you access this a01 in the second iteration since this is already be, been replaced that's why that's why there is a miss on every element right so so there is a miss on every every element so that's why the total number of misses is basically total number of elements itself which means 64 into 128 is the total number of elements, which is 2 power 6 into 2 power 7, which is 2 power 13, right? So these many messages will be there because these many elements are there. By the way, if I just ask you, if I if I also ask you, so let's suppose, if I also ask you on the next page that what is the access pattern for the next iteration? See, this is the access pattern for the first iteration. But what is the access pattern of the next iteration? So let me just ask you, so you can say this is the access pattern of first iteration patterns of main memory block block in first iteration. What is that access pattern? You got to know that this is, this is going to be 0, 0, 8, 16, 24 and so on, right? In the second iteration, can you tell me? What is going to be the access pattern? In the second iteration also, you are going to access this, right? So since this is also going to the block number 0, and then you are going to access this, then again the block number 8. In the second iteration also, the access pattern is like this. So in, 
in which iteration so this is a07 because this is eight elements in which iteration the access pattern will got change see in the first iteration it will be like this in the second iteration also it will be like this in the third iteration it will be like this in the eighth iteration it will be like this okay in the eighth iteration it will be again because in the eighth iteration you will be accessing this one right because this is the number eight right number eight uh element so in the eighth iteration also access pattern is like this now in the ninth iteration in the ninth iteration the access pattern will be block number one and then plus eight plus eight because here we are you are shifting plus eight right so here you are going to access this then you are going to access this so plus eight plus eight so which means then uh nine then eight plus nine which is uh, 17 and so on. Okay. In the ninth iteration, you are going to get access pattern like this. Be uh, because of what was, was going to happen in the ninth iteration, you are going to fill this. Then you are going to fill basically uh, nine, the uh, the line number nine, then line number 17 and so on. Right. Okay. So anyway, it is a miss on every element. That's why total number of misses are, is 2 power 13 and 2 power 13 is 8192. Okay. Because 2 power 13 elements are here and these many misses are here. Okay, I hope you understood this particular question. It was very nice question. The only thing that you need to see that what is the access pattern of the blocks, right? From that, you can definitely solve this question. Okay. Now, there is one very interesting question. Do you want to try this question as a homework? Like there are different, different variations and each of this variation basically asking you for the miss rate. Do you want to try this? So just try this particular question. Okay. Just definitely try this particular question as a homework. Okay. There are, uh, there are different, different variations and they're asking for the misread. Solution is given on the next page. Okay. But you try at your own. You try this particular question as a homework. Right. And then, then there are, there are some PYQs. You also try them, but we will solve all of the PYQs. Okay. We will solve all of the PYQs tomorrow, but you also try them. Okay. So just try out all of these PYQs. If let's just see how many of you can, uh, can do how much PYQ is. Okay. So just try out all of these PYQs, which are listed here. Cool. Okay. So thank you everyone. We will be doing the PYQs tomorrow. All of these PYQs we will be doing tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.